the country has been in such a deep malaise for what feels like so long mm. that we've forgotten what it feels like when things were good and they weren't perfect but there was no. a time when things were good and it felt like things were heading in the right direction and we've almost given up the hope that we could ever return to that kind of atmosphere yeah and again i say i don't blame young people because the opportunities for them are extremely limited our economy is shrinking um we're fighting among amongst each other which is always what happens when things are on the down yeah <laughs> I mean guys that is a very important statement we are fighting amongst each other and that is what normally happens when the country goes down you see in south africa I mean politicians understand one thing that if south africans talk about the issues the real issues that are actually holding the country back it will always go back to bite politicians this is why politicians are working overtime making sure that the people in this country they hate each other This is why politicians are working overtime making sure that the people in this country they are fighting with each other instead of talking about the issues that are actually facing South Africa. Man, I remember when I did that video about Orania. Some people still came out swinging and say that Thomas Orania it is racist. Man, I told people thousand times that I don't care how racist Orania is. Can we please try to look at what those people are doing in their community? I don't care how racist the place is. I honestly don't care. But can we honestly look at what that place is actually doing? Can we actually try to emulate what those people are doing in our own communities? But still, people do not want to look at that. People still want to talk about the fact that Orania it is a racist place. This is what politicians have actually succeeded in South Africa. Politicians have actually succeeded in making sure that the people in this country they don't talk about the real solutions. The politicians have actually made sure that the people in this country man, they will always talk about racism. They will always fight about the issues that are not going to take the country forward because politicians understand that if we are serious and if we dare sit down and talk about the issues that are actually holding ba- holding us back and talk about the issues or solutions how to move the country forward it will always go back to bite them this is why today people when you tell them that guys i don't care how racist orania is you can say orania it is racist i do not care that the place is racist but can you please try to look at what those people are doing in their community people are refusing to look at what orania is doing in their own community because they say orania it is racist because they say orania it is racist So South Africans are choosing to fight amongst each other instead of actually coming up with the solutions how to move the country forward. South Africans are choosing to hate each other instead of talking about the issues that are actually holding the country back. I mean, how many people have you actually seen sitting down and saying, "Guys, forget that you're a black man, forget that you're a white man. Can we honestly sit down and talk about the issues that are facing the country? Politicians are making sure that those conversations are not taking place. This is why every time when we talk about these things, you will see people on the comment section saying that Thomas, how can you say that? Thomas, how can you encourage that? And I'm saying, man, I don't care about all of these things because I understand at this point that all of these petty fights are not going to take us anyway. I understand that South Africa is going down. I understand that the crime is destroying people's lives i understand that unemployment it, it is destroying people's lives i understand that a bad infrastructure it is destroying people's lives can we please try to talk about those issues can we please try to talk about those issues when you try to talk about those issues people are saying no man no let, let's not talk about those issues can we talk about apartheid can we talk about colonialism i mean like what are we going to benefit by sitting here and whining and crying about apartheid what are we going to benefit by sitting here and whining and crying about colonialism it is not going to help us with anything but what is going to help us is us as people man if we can sit down and talk about the issues that guys this is what is holding south africa back this is what holding south africa back this is why i'm saying that the african national congress has actually won they have won this social fight because they understand at this point that south africans will never will never talk about the issues that are facing them south africans will always try to fight instead of talking about the issues that are facing them politicians have won man politicians have won if you are a white man <laughs> there is nothing that you can do There is nothing that you can do man even if you are a white man you take 10 black children you take them to school 
people will still say that you are racist. They don't care that you are taking 10 black children to school. If you are a white man or if you are a white person, people don't care what you do in this country. They don't care what you do. You can do whatever that you want to do. Like, you can take 20 children to school. You can pay bazaaris for 100 schoolers. I mean, they don't care about that. They're still going to say, man, yeah, still, but that means that person is racist. We don't care about that. This is where the country is right now. This is where the country is right now. And this is why I'm telling people that, guys, it is very important for us to ignore all the petty fights. It is, like, it is okay to understand that maybe we don't get along. It is okay for us to say that, okay, I may not get along with you, but I am willing to sit down with you and actually talk with you. I am willing to sit down with you and actually listen to the solutions that you are going to bring. This is what I'm trying to say. But people are not willing to have those conversations because it is nice for us to have the petty fights. It is nice for us to say that I'm not going to listen to anything because that person is black. I'm not going to listen to anything because that person is white. It is nice for us to say that. But at the same time, we are not looking at the fact that South Africa is drowning. The country is drowning. While we are busy with the petty fights, South Africa is drowning. South Africa is drowning. We are busy with the petty fights. South Africa is drowning. We are fighting amongst each other. We are fighting amongst each other. We have the worst ministers. We have the worst presidents. The African National Congress has given us the worst presidents. For the past 15 years, the African National Congress has given us the worst ministers. These people have destroyed the state-owned entities. They have destroyed the infrastructure. They have destroyed everything in this country. But for some reason, South Africans are still refusing to talk about the issues that are actually holding them back. And politicians are working over time, making sure that the people in this country, they will never talk about the, the issues that are facing them. Because if we have to sit down and really talk about the issues that are facing us it was it is going to go back and bite the politicians and they don't want that and they don't want that this is why today when you see south africans they think it is okay for us to have 350 political parties south africans think it is okay for us to have every tom dick and harry walking around calling themselves a lead people think it is okay people think it is okay because this is how divided people are South Africans, men, at this point, they should have said, men, we don't care about the 350 political parties. We don't care about all of these things, men. We need to have a dialogue as the people of this country. We need to start having debates as people in this country. This is the only way we can move forward as people in this country. But people, know are not willing to do that. People are not willing to do that, man. We simply want to fight. We simply want to look at the next petty fight. This is the fight that we are going to fight. Can we please try to bring me the pettiest fight that you could ever find? I'm willing to fight for that. I'm willing to fight for that. People are willing to stand up and go on the streets and protest and bend the tires because a white man said that you are a kafir. This is what people are willing to protest for. Next name, you hear... Next thing you hear that a uh, hundred million rands was stolen that was supposed to build the toilets. And, 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 when, and, and when you follow the story, you understand that 10 children have died in the pit toilets and politicians have stolen hundred million rands that was supposed to build those toilets. People are not going to stand up and protest for that. They are not, they are not willing to stand up and protest for that. Why? Because it is the result of the identity politics and racial politics. These are the results of identity politics and racial politics. People are not willing to stand up and fight for the issues that are impacting them directly. People are willing to stand up and fight for the, for the issues that politicians are telling them that, guys, this is the issue that we should fight for. This is why every time when Ramaphosa went out and said that we are going to fight for the people of Palestine, I said, man, Ramaphosa should be ashamed of himself for going out and saying that he's going to fight for the people of Palestine when the people of South Africa don't have anyone to fight for. Ramaphosa stood there and said that we are going to fight for the people of Palestine to have water and electricity. But the people of this country, they don't have water and electricity. It is shameful for our president to say that he's going to fight for other people when we need him here as, as a country. When we need him here as the country. And for some reason, people say that it is okay. Yeah, yeah, South Africa, it is, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, South Africa should, should fight those people in Israel. South Africa should fight the Israelis because what the Israelis are doing, it is not okay. As if South Africa things are working. As if South Africa things are working. And when we say, guys, how can the president of the country focus on the issues that are facing the Palestine when we have a country like South Africa? People are saying that now nah, you don't understand the international matters, man. You need to shut your mouth. You don't understand the international matters. This is what people are telling us. This is what people are telling us. Things are not going to go better. Things are not going to, to, to be better in this country, man. 
things are not going to be good in this country, man. Are not going to be good. Some people are willing to put racial politics in front of everything. Some people are willing to put identity politics in front of everything. That's why today in South Africa, man, even if when you watch parliament, even when you watch parliament, the people in parliament, they are not addressing the issues they are talking about. The people in parliament, they are busy addressing each other. The members of parliament that you are paying with your tax, fine, with, with, with your tax money, they are busy fighting with each other. They are not fighting. They are, they are not talking about the issues that are actually bringing them there in parliament. They are not talking about, guys, can we, no, they are busy addressing each other. They are busy addressing each other. So people are taking what they sing in parliament and applying it on their day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> man, it's going to be hard for South Africa to move forward, man. It's going to be hard for South Africa to move forward. Every person, man, who, who decides, like every, like every person who says that, man, we need to move forward, guys, can we please avoid these petty fights? Can we please try to talk about the issues that are facing us as the country, man. The ANC will come out and say, no, 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 no. Don't talk about the issues that are facing us, man. Let's talk about apartheid. Yeah, let's talk about apartheid, man. Like, what do you know about colonialism? What do you know about Chris Hani, man? What do you know about Robert Sobuk? This is what the African National Congress would prefer us to talk about. They don't want us to talk about them. They don't want us to talk about their track record. They don't want us to talk about their terrible and incompetent ministers. They don't want that for South Africans. No. No, South Africans must sit there and talk about apartheid. We must sit there and talk about Chris Hani. We must sit there and talk about Robert Sobuke. As if those issues are actually going to affect our lives today. As if those issues are going to affect our lives today. So, man, I don't know how South Africans are actually going to move forward. I don't know how we are going to move forward. Man. Right. Things are on the up. And remember, we had 6% growth rate then. Oh, yeah. So, the economy was booming. We had... I mean, I remember... It was Thabo Mbeki in the union buildings, Trevor Manuel running finance, Titumbo Eni running the Reserve Bank. Yeah. And we had people, we had ministers who we could look up to. I remember thinking, I want to interview that minister. Mm. I want to talk to this person because mm. they're smart. They, they're making this country better. Yeah. And I look around now and I think there isn't one of those people who I'd want to talk to. First of all, no one would want to listen to them. Of course, man, who would want to listen to, to Nomvula Mkwenyani, man? You know, sometimes we simply listen to these people because they are there in ANC Top 6. Sometimes we just subject ourselves to the nonsense of listening to politicians because these people are there in ANC Top 6. But honestly, no one wants to listen to any of these ministers. No one wants to listen to any of these ministers because they inspire no hope. They don't inspire South Africans in any way, shape or form. South Africans don't want to hear anything. When it comes to these ministers but for some reason these ministers men have managed to convince south africans that guys please do not talk about the issues that are facing us please don't talk about the issues that are facing us it's not going to bring me audience it's yeah. not going to please the audience i already have but second of all what are they going to add i i would come to talk to you five days a week before i'd go and spend yeah. 15 minutes talking to anyone who's in our cabinet at the moment, or even the leaders of all our political parties, frankly. You, you know, I do spend a lot of my, <laughs> my time talking to ministers, talking to people who are leading government. And the thing that depresses me about it <laughs> so much is you just can't believe the complacency. Like that thing you were saying about going to the Rock or the Samas or the Oscars, and you can see people's faces and you can... There's a certain thing you get in person that doesn't quite translate over the camera. But I keep asking people if they know how bad things are or why they aren't more like urgent hmm. about the situation. And you just get this sense of complacency. And I don't know how we get that out of our, our, um, our government without a vote that, that and the shocks and the people. Could I mean, like, these people are not even working for their money. So you cannot expect them to have any agency for nothing. They don't work for their money. They are used to not even being held accountable. So someone understands that, I mean, I can be a minister today and not deliver on anything, but the African National Congress is still going to pay me. South African taxpayers are still going to pay me. I'm still going to be able to take my children to the best schools. I'm still going to be able to afford the best medical care for me and my family. So these people, they actually, they don't care. They don't care. They are simply there for the vibes. They are simply there. They don't even care about the direction the country is taking. They don't care. The ministers don't care. 
they don't care that's why you don't see any like that's why you don't see our government officials actually standing up and saying guys man we, we like guys we really need we really need to make sure that south africa is headed the right way no everyone is just relaxed everyone is just relaxed man people are just doing their things because they don't get like they get paid to sit around and do nothing they get paid to sit around and do nothing and they understand that man if you are a minister it doesn't matter man what you do it doesn't matter what you do man no one is going to hold you accountable <laughs> no one is going to hold you accountable so there is no sense of agency when it comes to the ministers there is no sense of agency from the president so they are taking it from the president if there is no sense of agency from the president i don't believe there can be any sense of agency from the ministers man you look at ramaphosa you look at ramaphosa i mean when you look at ramaphosa do you think that is someone who actually wants to save south africa when you look at ramaphosa do you think that is someone who is actually worried about the the the, the, the direction of the country Gareth Cliff said that, man, even the leaders of the opposition parties, you look at those people, man. Do you think these people are people who are actually genuinely worried about where the country is going? Or do you think the leaders of these opposition parties, man, people simply want to go to the union buildings? People simply want to go to the union buildings, man, to boost their egos. It is not about fixing South Africa. It is not about taking South Africa and making sure that South Africa is, is moving the right way. No, it is not about that. It is about, I can get more votes than you. It is about I can get more votes than you. So even the leaders of the opposition parties, man, no one is actually showing that a sense of agency. No one is actually showing South Africans that, guys, I am worried about where the country is going. I am deeply concerned about where the country is going. These people, man, are just going around and, and, and living their best lives. They are going around and having their best lives, man. So I don't think that we can have any sense of agency from the ministers when we don't have any sense of agency from the president himself. Because you get the government you deserve. Yeah. That's the ugly thing that yeah. we don't want to look in We've the mirror. We've become and complacent. Right. So that yeah. the average South African, we see someone on the side of the road who's looking desperate yeah. and hungry and, and, and probably like not mentally okay. Mm. And we drive past. We see stories in the news about cholera breaking up in like, breaking out in, in a, in a, a 2023 world that should not be a story it's and we should be in the streets like people protest about i don't know what uh, would get people fired up now but you remember those ridiculous like zoom and must go protests <laughs> i thought well at least they're at least they're enthusiastic sure. about something but we should all be enthusiastic about standing up and saying this is not on i mean like you know when gareth cliff is saying this man you you, you remember when you remember when Mike Shem from State of the Nation said that <clears throat> when Mike Shem from State of the Nation said that it's almost as if Ramaphosa has beat South Africans to submission. South Africans are not protesting, man. You remember when Jacob Zuma was the president? South Africans were actually active, man. South Africans were actually like you could you you could feel it that South Africans were not happy about having this person as their president south africans would actually make jacob zuma understand that man we are not happy about your presidents but ever since ramaphosa became the president south africans are just numb man south africans are just numb people can die because of cholera today because the comrades stole the money for the water treatment system people are just numb no one is going to go out and protest south africans men are just numb to everything the african national congress does at this moment we are just numb right I know that these things are more numinous and it's difficult if you're not personally affected to care about other people. But we've this the social media stuff has also disintermediated us from each other. Mm. We're mm. not at an arm's length where we don't actually look each other in the eye and we don't actually empathize. Yeah. We're not we've lost the ability to have conversations and compassion people mm. talk a big game on social media they're all trying to Absolutely. look like they're nice people you know sure. today i did this or look at this i'm taking a picture of me with this homeless people it's the most terrible terrible thing you could ever imagine is this this like voyeuristic poverty porn that people put up mm. on social media but they're doing it without any self-awareness at all it's this idea that this is making me a good person no, being a good person is actually going out there spending time with someone. And that's not hard to do. It doesn't have to cost you. Yeah. And we've lost that. I think we are the problem. Then you can start bringing... Of course, man, we have lost that, man. You know, when I was living in Johannesburg, man, I would see... <laughs> you know, in Johannesburg, man, in CBD, I would see people getting robbed. 
I would see people getting robbed, man. I was young as a student in Johannesburg. I would see people getting robbed, man. And no one would actually do nothing. No one would actually do nothing, man. I would remember that, man. You know, back in Free State, where I come from, man, criminals will never do this, man. Criminals will never rob people in front of... Like, criminals will never rob an old lady in front of people, man. People would make sure that a criminal regrets even stepping near that old woman. But I got to Johannesburg, man, and I saw how people lived, man. And I was like, jeez... I don't want to live here. I don't want to live here, man. And I don't want to live with these people, man. It means that criminals can come and kill you. And no one, don't, like, people don't care. They simply continue with their lives. They simply continue with their lives, man. So, Gareth Cliff is telling the truth, man. We don't even have empathy, man, towards each other. We don't have sympathy towards each other. We don't have sympathy towards each other. It is sad what is happening in South Africa, man. It is sad what is happening in South Africa. Someone. And that's not hard to do. It doesn't have to cost you. Yeah. And we've lost that. I think we are the problem. Then you can start bringing the government in. When people talk mm -hmm. about things, real social ills, like GBV. Sure. They go, oh, the gen gender-based violence is out of control in this country. And I go, yeah. So who's, the, who's at fault? And they go, well, the government. And I go, no, it can't be the government. The government's not coming into your house. They don't have an agent sitting in your room while you're beating your wife. Mm. That's, that's not the government. So that's a social ill. Talking about fatherlessness. Where are these dads? Mm. That's not the government. They didn't come and take your father away. There are historical things that we sure. can get into. There's a lot of depth and complication to, to most of these stories. Mm. Mm. And in fact, when you sit with anyone, even your worst enemy, and you talk to them, you really talk like you asked about interviewing. Yeah. That's why I'm bringing this up. Yeah. When you really sit and talk to someone, but you're interested in their answers... You won't be enemies at the end of that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you hate them at the beginning. And we've lost that. So if we can reconnect and start talking to each other, not on devices, but in reality, mm. we'll make this country better in increments. And then slowly those increments become exponential. And before you know it, we've got a country that where we're talking to each other again, communicating properly. Yeah. People are, are actually interested in other people, not just themselves. And then the politicians will have to. I've got... <laughs> man like this is why i say that politicians have won because there are so many conversations that south africans are not having right now there are so many polit there are so many conversations that south africans are not having right now because people are simply interested in the petty fights people are interested in petty fights people are interested in saying that a person is bad this is what people are interested in so guys i don't know man what do you think needs to be done for South Africa to go back, man, what do you think it needs to be done for South Africa to, to move in a positive light? Because I honestly don't believe that South Africa is moving in the right direction, man. I think that South Africa is headed for a disaster. And I think every rational person in the country understand that South Africa is headed for a disaster. South Africa is headed for a disaster. So, guys, I don't know, man. Please tell me what you think on the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and the most important part is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.